We begin our reports this morning in Chad, where following three years of military rule, Chadians are voting in presidential elections today, with General Mahmoud Idris Derby looking to consolidate the family dynasty. But reports say the polls were marked by delays, opening one hour behind schedule in some areas. Analysts say Mahmoud Derby took power on the day rebels assassinated his long-ruling father, Idris Derby, in April 2021, and is the most probable winner. But this is, comes despite the fact that his main opposition has drawn larger than expected crowds in campaign trolls. Well, the, this decision coincides with temporary departure of U.S. troops from Chad, a key Western ally in the region of West and Central Africa, quartered by Russia and plagued by jihadism. Well, joining us this morning from Cameroon is Moki Edwin Kinzeka. He is a VOA Central Africa reporter and is monitoring elections in Chad. Okay, so moving over to our questions, I was talking about resolutions that were adopted by the African Union, of which Chad is a member. Now, the provisions uh, prohibits candidacy of any transitional leader for leadership roles. And these same promises were made by the Junta uh, leader when he came into power three years ago. Now, would these not pose a challenge to the candidacy of General Derby? It's unkept promises on both sides. Mm. Derby, as you said, promised not to stand for election, not run as president. But three months before the election, the MPS party that was created by Debbie's father, that is um, General Ma Ma uh, uh, Idris Debbie Idlu, said Debbie, the younger Debbie, was their candidate. Mm. We expected, the, the public, the civil society and opposition expected Debbie to refuse, but Debbie accepted that he would run. He had said he would not go in for any election, so it is one unkept promise. The African Union you are referring to there has sent um, observers for elections and I followed the head of that mission saying that they wanted to see transparent elections in Chad, which means that they have already recognized the fact that Debbie, who promised not to be a candidate, is already a candidate. The opposition makes it very clear. I mean, the hardline uh, opposition, they make it very clear that no matter the outcome of those elections, they will not accept because Debbie was a candidate and he should not have been. Debbie has simply removed his dress of his military general and is now coming in as if he were a civilian uh, authority mm. or a civilian. The same thing his father did. You know, his father also was a military general. He took power uh, through a coup and yeah. handed to uh, eventually led for 31 years. And his son took over, bringing lots of confusion and asking questions if it was a, a, a Debbie dynasty that was being created in Chad. So... No matter what is said, what is certain is that the elections are taking place with Debbie as candidate and that the African Union will have no choice. They will accept the verdict of the ballot because they have already sent the delegation there. The delega delegation says Debbie is a candidate. They accepted his candidacy and mm. Debbie is likely to win the election. So the challenges will come up. But, uh, we are sure, let's be certain that maybe they will be able to handle the challenges that come up. Okay, so let's look at the challenges that Chad is facing at the moment. Well, this includes a serious crisis that resulted in an increase in petroleum products, adding to the flow of refugees who are present in the country. Now, that also led the government to declare a state of food emergency. Now, not forgetting aid coups that have taken place since 2020. Now, this country is about to transition to the democratic side. Are there concerns of a democratic backslide once they begin this transition process? Process. It is already a problem from the on go from the beginning because uh, Debbie was not supposed to be. So expect the challenges, expect the problems, ex expect the um, the backlash, the, 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 the democratic backslide. Uh, the issue of refugees is really very preoccupying. You are talking about Sudan. Don't forget the Boko Haram crisis in neighboring Nigeria and Cameroon with the spillover in Chad that the government has to uh, handle. As we speak today, there are already protests. There, there were protests the whole last week in Chad because of increasing food prices. A liter of um, petrol in Chad costs about $2, about $1.5. It is very expensive for an old oil producing nation, and the civilians don't seem to agree. They have been protesting, saying that they can't be living in an oil producing nation and not having enough bad roots and whatever you, you call them. 
these are the issues that we see continue. The fighting we see continue. The, the trouble, the, the opposition will see be stronger after these elections. I discussed with some of the opposition leaders like uh, Masra, Success, who is of the Transformers Party, and he said it very clearly that the challenges will be there. The next government that comes, even if it is not Debbie, will have a lot to handle in mm. Chad because Chad is in serious difficulties and crisis. About two million people who live in Chad are not Chadians, they are uh, refugees, and uh, they are also people who are living in desperate conditions, fleeing Boko Haram crisis, and internally displaced persons. You know, Northern Chad is in conflict. They have been in conflict for a long time. These are the issues that will certainly continue after this election. Mm. Still speaking about the challenges that Chad is facing, well, recent events have raised fears of possible human rights violations and abuses during and after these elections. And there are also fears of protests and disruptions. Now, are these fears valid, looking at the issues that Chad has grappled with throughout the years? Are these issues valid? The fears are very, very valid. Valid because, you know, there was an am general amnesty given people who were arrested and locked up in October of last year mm. when Success Master, who is now a candidate and is also sitting prime minister, when he escaped from Chad through Cameroon and went to Washington, D.C., there are the issues that were raised that, you know, human rights violations in that country are serious. There were about 100 to about 200 or 50 or 300 people who were killed in that protest. They are asking for justice to be done now. And they were killed under the regime of the present ruler, the transitional president, who is still a candidate and likely to win. So they will come up, they will come up in the next in, in the next mandate, five-year mandate. People are asking for justice to be done. People are asking for the abuses of rights and freedoms to end. They are you remember that in February before the election, one of the leading opposition leaders was killed. And the government claims that he was using arms to fight state authority. So these are things that the opposition keeps on calling that must have to change if at all um, that, that the new government had to handle. But the government that's coming up may still be the government that has been there for several years. So it will be a very difficult situation for them. Human rights abuses and violations will, be, will still be there and people will be fighting for justice and freedom. Okay, Mr. Murky, just before we let you go, we understand that several private and independent media outlets were prevented from covering these elections. Now, what is the level of media coverage and participation that is expected? I discussed with an official of the uh, national elections body, they call it Ange, uh, in Chad this morning, and he said if they allow the media to have access to certain places, that he calls sensitive, there may be chaos. Whatever he calls sensitive is not known. Secondly, they have barred every Chadian, every voter, every representative of political party and the media from sharing result sheets of the elections. But the opposition insists, they say they, have, they will be sharing it for transparency sake. It is, it, as I was saying earlier on, it is not an easy situation in Chad as we're speaking because Many people think that their rights and obligations are tampered with, and the media is not giving access to some places. The civilians are not authorized to use their cameras to film even resource sheets. And remember in Senegal, results were available after elections almost the same day. The yeah. civil society is asking what the problem is in Chad that results will only come after two weeks. I mean, we have modern gadgets that could assemble a result immediately after. So people are saying that it is another ploy by them to abuse the rights and freedoms of people. And for the uh, present government, the military junta to be in power, the human rights abuses are there. The media is not permitted to do its job as it's supposed to be. Some of the media organs were even banned. Then the observers themselves, there were about 300 um, groups of observers that applied. Applications were given to 120. And the government of Chad is saying that because the others did not respect laws and uh, regulations of the country. So uh, it is a precarious situation in Chad. Uh, we hope that with the current effort of reconciliation and dialogue that have uh, been proposed by the success master, who is one of the candidates, one of the main uh, opposition candidates, things may change eventually. If not, Chad will be descending into chaos from what we have observed and from what the opposition and civil society groups are saying. 
Okay, Mr. Murky, thank you so much for joining us this morning and giving us those updates. We appreciate you. It was a pleasure. All right. So that was Murky Kinzeka. He is reporting from Cameroon on the elections in the Republic of Chad.